is um, Anthony Chen. I'm a filmmaker. Unfortunately, today I'm not really talking about my films. My films are probably too long for me to actually bring here to show you. But I brought with me an alphabet. <laughs> I brought with me um, the alphabet H. Um, why H? Because I think it sums up very much um, a lot of the philosophies and some of the working principles, guiding principles, you know, that have helped me a lot, you know, in life as a filmmaker and as an artist. Let's begin with H for honesty. Um, honesty is something that I really firmly believe in. I think it's very important to be able to, you know, look at yourself in a mirror and really understand that you, know, you, you like what you're doing and you know what you're doing. Um, I think a lot of times, um, you know, it's, it's a very glamorous thing right now you know, to be a filmmaker. You kind of think, oh, you get to be with the stars, you know, it's show business, you get to walk with the red carpet. Um, but I think a lot of times people are not being very truthful and honest about themselves. Um, I like to ask this to, to a lot of young filmmakers, you know, are you really, really in love with cinema? Are you really in love with film? Or you are sort of in love with the idea of being a director because it's two different things. And I think it's very important going into every project, you know, you know into deciding what you do next, that it is really something that you want to do. It's not because of other motivations, you know. Yes, you know, I think, I think it's very easy to be lured by other things, you know. Um, there are bad projects with a lot of money out there. Um, you know, and, and there, are, there are people who want to get into bed with you for the, all the wrong reasons. Uh, but I think honesty really would, would, would take you, you know, um, a very, very long way. Heart. Why do I talk about um, heart? I think in a country like Singapore, um, we are a very, very pragmatic society. We are a very, very practical society, um, such that you know, a lot of times we process um, a lot of things using, you know, our heads, you, you know, we, we like to rationalize everything, we like to think, you know, in logic and sometimes when you work as an artist, when you work as a filmmaker, what happens is what you, what you come up with is it's concepts, what you come up with is stuff which is, it's, it's very hard, you know, where's the softness and actually that softness comes from here. Um, I think a lot of times, apart from thinking with your head, it's very important to feel as a person because that is where the good art comes from. That is where uh, the good work actually comes from. Hunger. Um, you know, I think a lot of practitioners will tell you about this. Um, this is probably one of uh, the most uh, primitive instinct, you know, and, and that's the reason why we have survived for so long, you know. As cavemen, we were very, very hungry and we had to hunt, we had to learn to fight, we had to really struggle. And without hunger, I think I wouldn't be where I am today. You know, a lot of people sort of see me on interviews, see you on the red carpet, you know, winning awards. It looks very glamorous, but actually no one knows that it's, it's the hunger actually that drives all this achievement. No one probably knows that I have you know, at this moment, only $100 in my bank account because I've been very hungry for, for a long, long time. Um, in fact, it's come to a point where um, I'm so used to only topping up my EasyLink card, my transport card, with $10 each time because, because I, I'm, I'm so used to having so little money that, that I run out of money so much. You know, I should, I should share with you this story. Uh, this happened about two years ago. I just came back from the UK finishing my master's at the National Film and Television School and I was given a commission project. It was a very big project. You know, I had to capture Chinese New Year from the 1970s to the present day. You know, you think the budget was good. Um, but of course, you know, the first age, you know, I wanted to be honest with myself. Um, so I wanted everything to be authentic, you know, the props, the setting, the hair, everything. Um, you know, I'm very, very obsessive compulsive, you know, as a filmmaker. Uh, some of you might not know that, but I'm quite a control freak. Um, and eventually we ended up um, 27,000 over budget. You know, no one wanted to take responsibility for that. The organization said, oh, you know, we don't actually look at um, contingency budget because we, we don't actually use it ever in any of our projects. Um, that's not the case in film, but that was me, you know, I got into that, you know, the moment I graduated, you know, from film school, after I finished my master's in the UK, $27,000 worth of debt, I spent a whole year paying off that debt, shooting commercials and, and whatnot. Um, 
you know, it was a film about Chinese New Year. But that New Year, that Chinese New Year, was had a very, very lasting impression on me. Um, you know, there's another H involved as well. H for Hong Bao. Um, I got married at a very young age. You know, I got married at 25. Uh, I came back to Singapore a few years later and then I realised that, oh yeah, during Chinese New Year you have to give Hong Pao, which is red packets. And so we had our reunion dinner. I went to the ATM, I drew up some cash because I needed to give red packets to, you know, the young ones, to my nephews, my cousins. You know, I was the oldest in my generation. I had, you know, I, I think my relatives had too many kids. Um, and, and I was there, you know, you know, pressing my pin, you know, taking out, I didn't have a lot of money, you know, I took out $120, I reckon, yeah, if I wrap only like, you know, if I'm a bit cheapskate, a, a bit stingy, if I wrap like $4, you know, like red packets, it can last me. Um, but after I took that money out, what I had left, I remember that very well, $1.25. Um, so that was, you know, a very, very happy New Year for a lot of people, but it was the most unhappy New Year for me because I remember I went back home, I went back into my room and I just covered myself in a blanket and I cried. I cried so badly because I didn't know how did I end up like that? You know, award-winning filmmaker, going places, getting recognition, but, you know, and I, I questioned myself, I did ask myself, perhaps, you know, like everyone else, you know, I should find a proper job. You know, I think uh, I do fantastic PowerPoints, I speak well, I write well, I think I'll get a very, very good day job. Um, you know, I have a ed good education as well. But, you know, I, I went back and forth and I didn't quite know um, what, what is the answer. Eventually, you know, I was, I was being honest with myself again and I was being hungry. Hungry for what? Hungry to make work. I realised that there's nothing else that I wanted to do apart from making films. Hunger has actually taken me a long, long way. Um, and I do hope, you know, I won't be hungry for too long. Uh, humble, you know, I'm not trying to do a morality speech here. Um, but, but yes, because you are, you are hungry, you tend to be very humble. But at the same time, I think it's very important as an artist, as a filmmaker, to put yourself in a certain, a certain space, to always keep yourself grounded. Because uh, particularly in a place like Singapore, you know, Singapore is very small. I think, you know, in terms of the arts, in terms of, the cult in, in terms of culture, we are still very much pubescent. We are still trying to learn our ways. We're still trying to grow. So it's very easy to feel like, oh, you've done very, very good work. You know, you are, you know, uh, at the top of your game. Which is why, you know, I was educated in the UK. I'm living in London now and I love living in London. Um, not because, not because, oh yeah, you know, I, I love the Brits for, for being British. But, but what I love about London is the fact that, you know, there is it's so inspiring because there are so many talents around. There are so many very hungry, talented people, not just in film, in arts, in theatre, in music, uh, in all fields, that it makes you feel so small. And, and actually, I like that. I like that feeling of being humble because it keeps you very, very grounded. It keeps you really, really small. You sort of feel you're nothing compared to all these people and it, and it challenges you. It, keep pushes, it keeps pushing you forward. I think that's very, very important as an artist, as a practitioner, as a filmmaker. Hunch. This is the biggest lesson that I learned, not in film school, not in art school, not anywhere. Um, for me, hunch is like a gut feeling. And, you know, unfortunately, I would love to be a genius, but I don't think I'm a genius, you know. You know, in, 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 a, in, in the entire world population, probably less than 1% of people are real geniuses. I wish I knew, you know, everything. I wish I had all answers. But a lot of time, as a director, as a filmmaker, you go on this journey, and you, you have no clue what it is. But a lot of times, I think gut feeling is your strongest asset. You know, that's your hunch. Um, I'll give you a very, very good example. You know, I was making uh, a graduation film in the UK and it had a lot of landscapes. And I got into a huge argument, you know, when I was doing this road trip with my producer. And what was that argument about? I told her, you know what? I do not want to see any dark green trees, plants or foliage in the film. 
Um, I, I had no idea why I told her that, but I had a hunch. I told her, that, you know, I come from a country where everything is just green, everything is tropical green. I don't want to see that, you know, in a film. And we got into a very, very heated, you know, discussion and argument over like why, you know, because it was completely irrational. A lot of times. You know, the gut feeling, the hunch of an artist is completely irrational. But you have to go with it. You can't explain why you have to fight your way in. You still have to struggle a bit. You sort of need to convince a lot of people when you haven't got real facts, you haven't got real logic to back you up. But at the end, when you make the film, it will all make sense. And you understand, oh, why did you go for this colour? Why did you cast the actor? It's all about gut feeling. And I think that has you know, taken me quite far as well. Humanity, um, you know, I, I have to say this, I think, I think filmmakers or artists would be fooling all of you if, if they tell you that, oh, they have no ego, because filmmakers have got huge egos. Um, it's very hard, you know, not to inflate their egos because they go around being recognized for their work, uh, they, they win awards, people tell them, oh, wow, you made a great film, things like that. I think without ego, you probably can't practice, you probably can't make work. Um, but I think it's very, very important to sort of pull yourself down, keep yourself grounded and get yourself in touch with humanity again because real work, real art, you know, it's about, it's about what you really see. It's not what you process inside. You know, if you look at look at filmmakers that have got huge, huge inflated egos and they go all the way up there, You'd see, if you look at the body of work, sometimes the work might not be its strongest at the end of the journey, you know, because it loses something, because they stop looking. I think it's very, very important to open your eyes, uh, to look at people, to stay connected. I think it's important to be fearful of humanity. I think it's, it's important to be in awe of humanity. I think that's, that's the only time when you can continue to, you know, practice good work. And of course, you know, the last of my seven H is happy, you know. Yeah, you know, I don't like to sound like uh, condescending or anything, but yes, um, you need to feel happy about doing the stuff that you're doing. You know, if you're given a job, um, if you're working on a project, if you're writing a script, um, I can promise you it wouldn't be a good piece of work if you're not happy working on it. It will be painful, but you need to, you sort of need to be a bit sadistic as well, you know, you sort of need to enjoy pain, you know. Uh, you sort of uh, um, need to enjoy the pleasure of going through the torture and, and, and the pain because I can tell you that making art, making film, it's, it's not easy, it's, it's a real struggle, it's, 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 it's really tormenting, but, but you need to seek a certain pleasure and, and, and you need to really feel um, a certain satisfaction, a certain, it, it needs to make you feel good, you know, it, it, it must make you feel like you're, you're high on drugs, you know, and, and you can keep going and, and, um, and you wouldn't let go. Um, I, I haven't taken drugs, by the way, but <laughs> I sort of know because recently I, I learned something else. I learned about balloon parties. Um, so that's it from me. You know, I've summed up you know, everything using an alphabet, using H. So I, I found my alphabet in life, and I hope that you too will find your ABCs, your alphabet in life. Thank you so much.